Nazis and the Nephilim. By, James P. Pierce. If you think this is going to all hinder just the giants, this is a bit more to do with the spirit of an age, the embracing of it, and the execution of a very satanic plot. This is going to be one heck of a roller coaster ride, strap in. The source material credits for the following comments and opinions are sourced from this main article. Nephilim theorist says Hitler was possessed by Nephilim, Democratic Party continues Nazi Nephilim agenda, 1. A new term has arisen out of this article, if you all took a look at it before reading this, Theosophy like I said, roller coaster ride. This is where the life is in the blood and that vibration to godhood comes straight out of the satanic playbook. Dujan and Dyer are just examples of this on the orthodox side with their adoption of it to subvert the true faith. Let us look at some rhetoric from Dujan's camp. Source, 4. Chaos Magic as the True Duginist Weltanschauung. The Misanthropic Ideas of British Occultist and Satanist Aleister Crowley, D. 1947, do however inform both the Duginist worldview and its contemporary praxis. Indeed it is within the worldview of chaos magic specifically, which is a spawn of Crowley's Thelemic philosophy, where much of the paradoxes and seeming contradictions of the Duginist Weltanschauung, and especially in its fourth position's catch-all of beyond right or left, must be sought, since this is, whether explicitly articulated or not, the actual animating locus of the Duginist far-right praxis, beginning with its choice of symbology, i.e. his Eurasian flag of eight white or yellow thunderbolts, or arrows, shaped in a radial pattern and set behind a black background. This symbol by itself is alternatively referred to in chaos magic as the will of chaos, the symbol of chaos, arms of chaos, the arrows of chaos, the chaos star, the chaos cross, the chow sphere or the symbol of eight. Somewhat reminiscent of the Thule Society and then Hitler's own appropriation of the swastika from the writings of Theosophical Society founder H.P. Blavatsky, D. 1891, Dujin derives his design from the popularizations of it made by Western chaos magicians during the 1970s to 1980s who themselves appropriated it from the work of British science fiction and fantasy novelist Michael Moorcock. It should be noted here that both the number 8 as well as the color black play a pivotal role in all neo-Nazi slash far-right symbology, not to mention that the will of chaos itself maintains striking similarities to the well-known sun will symbol used by the SS and many contemporary neo-Nazis, likewise the symbol of the old Spanish phalangists. In his own defense, Dujin would probably assert that the number 8 also holds important correspondences within esoteric Christianity as well where it refers to Christ. However, his obvious, or dubious, rather, choice of the will of chaos over the cross would tend to refute that claim. In addition, as a self-proclaimed Russian nationalist, it is not clear exactly why Alexander Dujin would choose his chief symbol from sources located within the tradition of British occultism rather than from those of his native Russia or, for that matter, from the Eastern Orthodox Christianity that he claims to adhere to. This point alone, we believe, further reinforces the allegations regarding Dujin's anti-traditionalism, while simultaneously locating him in a very different universe altogether than the one he claims to be speaking for. Be that as it may, such behavior in itself would be quite consistent with chaos magic's basic dictum regarding the malleability of all beliefs and their pliability as tools in the hands of the chaos magician. Here it is the Nietzschean will to power in itself that becomes the prime motivation of the black magus turned political activist. Emerging from this, the next significant formula of chaos magic is that of a continual paradigm shift or the constant arbitrary changing of beliefs, where holding contradictory positions simultaneously becomes the vehicle for self-realization and understanding of the coincidentia oppositorum underlying all phenomena. As a spiritual practice, there are numerous correlations and comparisons that can be made with this specific idea among many traditions around the globe, i.e. Taoist, Sufi, Tantric, Zen, Hermeticism, etc., and in and of itself it is neutral. Except that with Dujin and his acolytes the issue is not linked specifically to any spiritual practice and its realization per se but rather it is purely about political praxis and the will to power in its crudest form. 
In other words, for Dujin the alchemical laboratory and its Ars Operativa reside not in the self but rather in the greater world and the theater of politics where the Black Magus acts to immanentize the Eshatan and where this Eshatan represents the inversion of all values. The philosopher's stone for Dujin is thus power over the world for its own sake and not over the self. This, including other features of his thinking, is what informs the paradigmatic beyond left and right catch-all latched onto by the Duginists. It is also what makes Dujinism particularly dangerous as an ideology and a movement. In other words, in this worldview where chaos magic acts as the ideological primum mobile, occultist principles are made to serve a fundamentally fascist political program. Some would also call this a form of Satanism and yet another manifestation of the very modernity and materialist West that Alexander Dujin has otherwise railed against. Arguably, and whatever else Dujin says to criticize and distance himself from it, Hitlerian National Socialism attempted precisely the very same thing, animated also, as it was, by almost identical underlying ideological concerns and motivations. That said, René Ganon alleged about Blavatsky and her Theosophical Society that during the 19th and early 20th centuries they were essentially acting in the capacity of a colonialist Trojan horse put up by the Imperial British Secret Services in order to infiltrate and disrupt the traditional religious subcultures of the subcontinent, see his, Theosophy, The History of a Pseudo-Religion, 2004. Given Dujin's networks in Iran, Lebanon, Syria and elsewhere in the Islamic world, not to mention Eastern Europe, it is not entirely out of the realm of possibility that similar patterns and inducements may be motivating and underlying the Dujinists' recruitment agenda whereby Dujin himself can be seen as the new Blavatsky with his networks the successor to the Theosophical Society come British Imperial Trojan Horse. Certainly, their attempt to further break down the already fractured left-slash-right spectrum in Europe in order to recruit for the far right appears to speak to it directly given that their unambiguous racist and reactionary rhetoric on the immigration-slash-refugee crisis, on the face of things, otherwise defies the alliances they have made inside the Islamic world among Iranians, Iraqis, Lebanese, Syrians and other sectors of the resistance axis. Much like Hitler incorporated Christianity into his polemics as a political tool and not much else. This is where that racial element overtakes a true nature or pointed out orientation to Christ. Now people will ask, what is Theosophy, well here is the definition of it. Theosophy Theosophy is a religion established in the United States during the late 19th century. It was founded primarily by the Russian immigrant Helena Blavatsky and draws its teachings predominantly from Blavatsky's writings. Yet this just did not emerge out of anywhere and here are the connections back to the Third Reich as to how it justified its occultism to a German public at the time which was in the majority Protestant and Catholic. Let's take this quote from a deranged individual into the attitude they had toward Christianity. Bolshevism, the illegitimate child of Christianity. I think you might be able to take a guess as to who said that, but let us go further into building the narrative that was used framed as positive, but as already pointed out by me, used as veneer soaked in heresy. The heaviest blow that ever struck humanity was the coming of Christianity. Bolshevism is Christianity's illegitimate child. Both are inventions of the Jew. The deliberate lie in the matter of religion was introduced into the world by Christianity. Bolshevism practices a lie of the same nature when it claims to bring liberty to men, whereas in reality, it seeks only to enslave them. In the ancient world, the relations between men and gods were founded on instinctive respect. It was a world enlightened by the idea of tolerance. Christianity was the first creed in the world to exterminate its adversaries in the name of love. Its keynote is intolerance. Adolf Hitler, and yes the quote of Bolshevism being the illegitimate child of Christianity also belongs to him. I am not sure where to start on this malfeasance against God used for political gain, but I will do the persecution at another time. So this should set up an idea of where I am going next to justify the theosophy of the Third Reich and how it embodies a spirit of an age, an old age, but one based on paganism along with continuous persecution of Christians as it did in the East with Bolshevism. 
it seems like everyone seems to forget how heavily persecuted Orthodox, Catholic, and Protestant Christians were during these time periods as well, yet if he interpreted Bolshevism as something coming out of Christianity, he could not be more off the mark. This is definitely a setup for theosophic dialectic, I promise that the hard statistics will come in an article separate from this as for the persecution amongst the Orthodox at large from National Socialist and Communist slash Bolshevik occupations. If anything was proven by the Laban's wrong policy, this should give people a lot of perspective on where that one will go. No need to beat the horse here, but here is the theosophic connections based on the Thule society, people can go round and round and deny that Hitler had a connection to any kind of secret society, but he did just that with National Socialism which propped up a theosophic dialectic. Oh, and by the way, it was official policy to persecute Christian community leaders and priests to replace it with whatever rhetoric the Reich wanted to interject into the Gospel. So here is the link to this sourced quote. 2. Now here is the informative quote. The link between Theosophy and Nazism. Now we get to the sticky part. The historical link between Theosophy and Nazism can't be denied, unfortunately. Guido Carl Anton, von, List read the secret doctrine and adapted many of its ideas to a nationalist esoteric German vision of world history. He turned Blavatsky's universal vision about humanity as a whole into a nationalist, German-centric, racist theory in which the German race was seen as superior to all other races. None of this is in Blavatsky's secret doctrine. Blavatsky did have a view of mankind and what she called races, but the Western race, not German per se, wasn't so much superior as the latest. Blavatsky felt that the Indian race, though older, was more spiritual. But in the history of ideas, there is still a link from Blavatsky to List, because the latter read her work. Then there's a link from von List to Jörg Lanz von Liebenfels. Then there is a link from Liebenfels to Adolf Hitler himself. The most important part is in Chapter 15 where Gudrich Clark examines the links between Adolf Hitler, von List, and Lanz von Liebenfels. It turns out to be pretty certain that Hitler was influenced by Lanz von Liebenfels when he lived in Vienna. This fact was never publicly acknowledged by him and groups directly affiliated with the occult realm were consistently prosecuted in Nazi Germany, like other lodge-based organizations, including the Theosophical Society and Freemasonry. If you look at the Thule Society, the extrapolation kicks itself into high gear despite the already satanic foundation of anti-human occultism, which Plato would have a hard time taking on. The Thule Society was very much the secret society answer to what the Reich outlawed in the way of those other societies, they just switched out one Hegelian dialectic for another. Here is just another link to the Theosophy link and what is entailed. Thule Society The Thule Society, originally the study and group for Germanisches Alterdom, was a German occultist and folkish group founded in Munich shortly after World War I, named after a mythical northern country in Greek legend. So now you link into what the Aryan race theory was carried out with the abject rejection of Christianity in Nazi Germany and you have a perfect recipe for the spirit of its age. It has been argued that National Socialism is just racial communism, as an Orthodox Christian and knowing the far left roots of that spectrum, I could not agree more. This is where it has to get careful with the fascist dialectic, as they are so quick to point out the deflection or rejection of the liberal world order that embraced communism. Well with the war on the Vatican as the Thule society had, Western Christianity was just as under siege as Eastern Christianity was, one in the way of state-centered promises while following through on very disruptive socialist propagandist campaigns. So where is this all linking with the Nephilim by this point, you have to lay out the esoteric roller coaster tracks before you can take this ride and justify the embracing of paganism before you can make a tie-in for the rejection of Christianity by this point. Well, there is the spirit of this age, which once again embraced something pagan and entirely destructive to what the fascists rejected at the time with Bolshevism. On the contrary as always. Here is the spirit of the Nephilim in this quote from the first link list of the main article this is based on. Wayne believes that Vril is likely the RH negative bloodline, representing the Nephilim's contribution to the Aryan bloodline. 
I will admit that this is the first I have heard of the claim that the Aryan race and its allies on Atlantis were the natural enemy of the pure Semitic race of Adam and the Israelites. I suppose in a way it's the natural outgrowth of Ignatius Donnelly's idea that Atlantis was the land populated by the Nephilim, but it took pounders to stop things for a moment and remind listeners that they are not calling any RH negative or Aryan viewers evil. Wayne, though says that the Isis gene will help Nephilim descendants vibrate to godhood. This seems to originate in a crazy 2003 web page that argues that Genesis means gene of Isis, so you know it has to be true. The Wayne being referenced is this man, his name is Gary Wayne, while I disagree with him that Hitler was possessed by a Nephilim spirit, they certainly embodied the spirit if they think this is what it boils down to, the overarching theme from drugs to sexual deviancy was rife everywhere within the Nazi party. So the part of the lack of deviancy amongst the party in response to the purity of the Aryan race is straight out of the occult. They took upon that as a mission to accomplish from their pagan ancestors all the way down to perpetuate myths. This blurb from Blitz is concerned about his drug use and once again a lie by a man in politics. That amongst Hitler saying he was a man of upstanding quality that never did drugs and threw away all the pleasures of the Weimar, all they did was turn it around and turned about the consumption. Arguably, more words have been spilled onto the page about Adolf Hitler than any person in the 20th century. Seven years ago, Berlin-based novelist Norman Oller became convinced there was more to say. In fact, there was a crucial element of Hitler's sociopathic behavior historians had downplayed or missed entirely, drugs. Mind-altering drugs. Not just the drugs Hitler was taking but drugs the German public began taking en masse in the 1920s, and the drugs specifically a newly invented methamphetamine called Provitin that fueled the German army, particularly during the Blitzkrieg surge into France and Belgium in May of 1940. Source link. 3. Yet again we see the paganism and the embracing of that satanic spirit via drug use, this is one of the ways they justified the war against the Semitic races that are ironically tied to the European ones if you are a strict creationist and completely bursts the ideological bubble that was thought to be completely sterile by post-Weimar Germany. Once again, on the contrary, they had turned everything on its head and created that false reality, that reality based on nothing but some kind of political scapegoating, I guess that has to be necessary when the empire is bleeding money. The Nephilim have always operated in these various aspects, from mind-altering drugs to see the other dimensions, all the way to paganism to create a man-made order. As they always want souls for their propaganda and nothing else. Let us look more into the Thule society and one of its underlying puppet masters, so much for the strings of Zionism or Satanism being hands off on every trailer trashed white nationalists wet dream, his name was Dietrich Eckhart. Here is the blurb on this detail here. Thule Society German Occult Society was founded in Munich in 1918 by Adam Glauer, 1875-1945, who styled himself Rudolf, Freiherr von Sebotenderf. This was an anti-Semitic society that had links with Adolf Hitler through the German Workers' Party, later National Socialist German Workers' Party. The activities of the Thule group were as much political as a cult, and their sphere of influence included judges, police chiefs, professors, and industrialists. Dietrich Eckhart, a central figure in the Thule group, also played a prominent part in the committee of the German Workers' Party and became one of the seven founder members of the Nazi Party. When he died in December 1923, he is reported to have said, follow Hitler. He will dance, but it is I who have called the tune. I have initiated him into the secret doctrine, opened his centers in vision, and given him the means to communicate with the powers. Do not mourn for me, I shall have influenced history more than any other German one. Now how far does it go with Eckhart, bringing about the spirit of the age into the outright rejection of Christ and into an age built for the Nephilim spirit, well let us look at the puppeteer, shall we? In Munich, Eckhart became acquainted with Anton Drexler and Gottfried Feder and between them, they founded the German Workers' Party. The party was one of many that could be called right-wing and nationalistic that existed in the chaos of the early years of Weimar Germany. Through Drexler, 
Eckhart met Adolf Hitler in 1919. While it is accepted that Hitler used people for whatever purposes he needed them for, it is generally considered that he developed a close friendship with Eckhart. In 1920, Eckhart took Hitler to Berlin. Here he used his connections to introduce Hitler to the likes of General Lüderndorf. The World War I general, still seen as a hero by many in Weimar Germany, was taken by the ideas expounded by both Eckhart and Hitler. While in Berlin Hitler also took lessons from a drama teacher on how to present himself while making speeches in public. If you take all of this into consideration and the virulent anti-Christian stance Nazi Germany took, it is far beyond reach that anti-Semitism is just a shadow of a doubt now, compared to the flagrant rhetoric against all things even within the scope of the Bible, the Germans were literally trying to counteract it. So as you can see, that Nephilim spirit of the age was deeply embedded within the Nazi mindset, everything from hard drugs to degenerate sexual deviancy, all the way up to the run-of-the-mill political posturing was used for the folk and dialectic, the likes of which was mere pagan Satanism shrouded as a positive Christian movement. 1. HTTPS colon slash slash www.jasoncolavito.com slash blog slash Nephi Lim hyphen theorist hyphen says hyphen Hitler hyphen was hyphen possessed hyphen by hyphen Nephi Lim hyphen democratic hyphen party hyphen continues hyphen Nazi hyphen Nephi Lim hyphen agenda. 2 http colon slash slash www.catincahesalink.net slash faq slash ariozophy.html 3.https slash slash www.uber.org slash new slash 2017 slash 03 slash 30 slash Norman Oler Blitzed. 4.https slash slash www.counterpunch.org slash 2016 slash 02 slash 10 slash Dugin's Occult Fascism and the Hijacking of Left Anti-Imperialism and Muslim Anti-Salafism slash Other Sources How, Elec Uranius Children, The Strange World of the Astrologers. London, 1967. Reprinted as Astrology, a recent history including the untold story of its role in World War II. Walker, 1968. King, Francis. Satan and Swastika, The Occult and the Nazi Party. London, Mayflower, 1976. Ravenscroft, Trevor. The Spear of Destiny. London, 1973. Webb, James. The Occult Establishment. LaSalle, Il, Open Court Publishing, 1976.